Hi, this is Diana, your favorite astro nerd, and I am back with the short video of a dwarf telescope. We know that dwarf is coming up with the uh, dwarf three telescope, and it seems that it's going to be probably sometime in August or. I even heard that it's going to be September. <laughs> but for now, I have been testing the new Sky Atlas. And this one, it's on the beta version. So it's just testing. It hasn't been officially released, but it has a lot of cool features. And so I'm going to show uh, some features that I found. And then I'm going to do a live demonstration so we can all take a look and start getting excited. Here we are. This is the new icon. And it's going to be right there on the home page. I'm just going to touch that icon there, the Atlas, and it's going to take us straight into the uh, Sky Atlas and the planetarium uh, looks exactly like Stellarium. And though, for those of you that are familiar with Stellarium, you know exactly what I'm talking about as they, even the landscape uh, looks almost identical because they are using Stellarium's model and also they are using the star catalogs, Gaia star catalogs, which uh, it's a very nice uh, star catalogs, very complete. And it's the one that it's mostly used used for pics inside and in pics inside all the uh, plate solving and everything that we do there it's with the Gaia telescope and, and we're going to be able to see the constellations and um, everything looks really good and here we have already some target and uh, this is seems to be a galaxy ngc let's see ngc 1145 and then we are going to see all the information and the coordinates and this one is a galaxy and group of galaxies <laughs> imagine that <laughs> okay so uh, once you do that, then it has this button here that looks like a camera and that's the one you're going to touch and it should start the calibration process and also to slew into that target and we're going to see that in a little bit on the um, live demonstration and it has a little compass down here and i think um obviously if this is just like stellarium then it should be a great uh planetarium software or app that it has been integrated now into the dwarf telescope some of the fascinating new features um, and that is that you are going to be able to put the labels on or off and the labels on of course it's going to show the uh, targets which is always very helpful and once you see the catalog number especially for beginners uh, like myself a little bit beginner plus then we can google and find what the target is and the name of it so that's on the labels then we have the grid so we can have that on and off which just like a uh, stellarium and then landscape we can turn that off but let me just go back here um, and then on atmosphere then it changes more into uh, what we have right now and you see right now um, it's not dark yet outside but I do have the right coordinates and I believe that's what it's doing right now but let's just go ahead and back here and I am just going to go back into landscape and there we are, which is not my landscape, but in, in Stellarium, you can customize and have your own landscape. It's just that it's a lot of work. <laughs> I did it once and then I said, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know if I need it. So <clears throat> let me just go back and put it like a uh, nighttime so we can have a better look what we're looking for it also has right here a search button which i love because i like to find my own targets and for example let's see ngc uh, 4852 and it's an open cluster it's one of those that i have photographed many times 
So it gives the information and once again, then it shows here the uh, button, which is like a camera, which is going to start the whole calibration process. And now once you have the Sky Atlas, the calibration process can start right here from the Sky Atlas. So that's a new thing. Okay, let me just change that. And we can go back here into the uh, search button and we're going to start seeing all of the features. And here's another good one. Now you can mark your favorite targets so you can find them faster next time. You just click there. Let's just see. We're just going to put a heart and let's say I want to photograph it again or just look at it and we'll just go into favorite so it's going to have right now it's what they recommend so and then the favorites are going to be there and that's the one that i just mark and then um the dwarf lab this is taking us back to what we had before which is um the different targets and we can look into nebula categories galaxy clusters and planet so all of that it's very helpful i really like a lot that it's going to have the recommended for the night and that is something that it's uh, very common in planetary and softwares uh, the pick of the night or whatever you want to call it but those are going to be the recommended and of course it's going to be based on your coordinates but we can always add here uh, manually the uh, coordinates to find the targets that you want if they are not in the catalog or if you already know it and this is something that we had before it's just that now it's kind of like everything is integrated uh, into the sky atlas okay and now from this beautiful view that we have here <laughs> on the sky atlas let me just go back and now if i want to connect the telescope we can always do it the way we used to do it before and that is perfectly fine or as i'm going to show you in the live demonstration we can also just go from the sky atlas straight into the calibration process very cool i like it i like it yes i do <laughs> and from what i understand all i need to do is click on that sky atlas and it looks really nice it kind of like looks like a, a stellarium so these fonts are a little bit too small <laughs> that's my first uh my first observation instructions that i got would just go into atlas and I just need to pick on a target and just send the telescope there and it should start the um, calibration. Okay, so let me just go back here to the north and let's just pick something that it's really close and bright. Okay, so here's the first instruction. So we're not doing like we, I was doing before that we just go into photo and astro mode. So point the lens to a cloudless, cloudless sky with dense stars, ensuring there are no obstructions. Sake, I think we have that right now. Let me see if I can do NGC, I believe it's 4258. It's a beautiful galaxy. Spiral Galaxy, um, yep, also known as M106. Yeah, let's just go ahead and do this one. Um, it should be in a good uh, place to reach right now. And there it is. <laughs> okay, so it found the target. And uh, now um, I guess we just go back to normal as like in function. I want to give more brightness here so I can see better on the screen. Let me just increase the gain just so we can see more on the screen. Yeah, sure enough. And that is the galaxy right there in the middle. Uh, let me turn off infrared. But that is the galaxy right there. So we are doing good. This is good. And we can see all kind of new features. That is right there, the center of the galaxy. And this is the part, uh, and it seems to be relatively in focus. And um, obviously, I am very bright here. 
because I put the gain to 120, but I can do it like 100. Let me close here. And now uh, the newest thing that I really like is that we can uh, change the target. So now if I go to stop and it stops tracking, but it keeps the calibration is what, what I understand. Let's see if I can go to Polaris. Let's just keep testing and find something that I'm familiar with. And right now it's on the go to process. Yes, that is Polaris. So we are good. Oh, this is very nice. Good. So now I am going to pick another target and stop tracking and go back to the Sky Atlas. So we don't have to do calibration again. Okay, so let's see if we can find the uh, boat's galaxy. This is going to be interesting. Okay, so the little one is saying that it found the uh, galaxy as it has been successful. And all I need to do now is to increase the shutter speed and give some more light here on the screen. So I can see where, <laughs> if this is the uh, galaxy or not, I can see well, but we're going to get this brighter. Yes, and now with more light, I do believe that is the boat's galaxy and the cigar galaxy right there. Oh, this is so exciting. How nice. Very good. Target to target. Very good. So I think this is all very exciting and it's going to be a lot of fun. The Dwarf Telescope has always been relatively easy to use and now it's going to be easier with the uh, Sky Atlas and the new features. And so we'll just wait until Dwarf Lab releases the first uh, official version of it. And then we will be doing more testing. But I think so far, I'm sure they have to fix a few little things here and there, but it's working. It's going to be very accurate and it's going to be a lot of fun to find all kinds of targets especially for people that are starting in astrophotography and they don't have the experience in using complicated planetarium softwares and here we have everything integrated into one tiny small easy to use telescope so i hope you like this uh, short demonstration and it's all on dwarf lab let's see what they have in the next uh, few weeks and hopefully i can do another video officially using the uh, sky atlas thank you for watching see you in a few days